Monogram is the top of the line elevated product from GE Appliances. GE has a rich heritage um, of manufacturing appliances for over 100 years, which carries a legacy of durability and craftsmanship. And in January, we launched a new collection. Um, and in doing so, we developed three main pillars that really support the look and feel of this line. And the first pillar is materials. Monogram sources the highest quality materials for our appliances. The second is performance. Every Monogram appliance provides the same experience in your kitchen as it does for our chefs. And lastly is ownership. We make our appliance ownership an enjoyable experience through personalized service and through our Wi-Fi connected appliances. Now let me show you the new collections here. I'm just going to share my screen. All right, hopefully you all can see my PowerPoint here. And we will start with the statement collection which features edge to edge handles with polished stainless steel and rich interactive graphic displays. It's a modern update to our former collections, but it fits wonderfully in a kitchen with traditional style. The beautiful brass accents really unify the overall aesthetic look of the collection. Then we have the minimalist collection. This is the most contemporary design we've ever had featuring precisely engineered metals, expansive glass, and LCD screens that come together in a streamlined design that flushes beautifully with cabinets. Okay. All right. Now, I'm gonna go over some teams how to, so you all can sort of participate and get, get the best experience you can with this platform. Um, again, I'm going to begin by sharing my screen um, and hopefully you all will be able to see Teams. Would anybody mind confirming if you could see my um, Teams desktop here? Yes, we can. Got it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, we want to say that um, you all are muted right now, um, but please, please feel free to use the mic here that I'm pointing to to unmute if you have any questions or comments we'd love to hear from you if you do not feel comfortable unmuting the mic you can definitely go ahead and use the chat function here so if you click that the chat box appears um, please you know chime in tell us what city and state you're from we'd love to hear um, you know where all of our participants are joining from it's really nice that we can all get together from lots of different places. So please feel free. Oh, thank you, Pat. We love that. And also next to the mic, you're going to see a camera icon. If you'd like, please feel free to turn your video on. We'd love to see your face um, and make it just, it makes it a more, you know, interactive and enjoyable experience. But again, we do understand if you don't want to, uh, but that's always an option for you as well. Um, and then last but not least, we want to make sure that when Chef John comes on, he is front and center on your screen. So there's going to be a couple steps that you need to take to do that. So first, I want you all to click on this show participants icon. Looks like two little people there. And it's going to populate the participants list on the right side of your screen. So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down and the participants are in alphabetical order. So you're going to scroll down until you see John Liddell. That's Chef John. And then you see three dots to the right of his name. You're going to click those dots and then you're going to click pin. Once you click pin, Chef John will be the only um, video you're going to see front and forward on the presentation. So if we do that, we see John right there. There he is. So that's what you all are going to want to do today to have the best experience. Please let us know if you have any issues with that. And 
If not, we can go ahead and kick it off to Chef John. Hey, John. Hey, Corwin. Thank you so much for that introduction. I love the walkthrough. I hope everybody has found the way to pin me and mute yourself and unmute yourself because the whole point of this experience is for us to be together and for us to get that interaction. Um, you know, it's so important right now that we can eat, uh, we keep that connect connection to each other. I had a great call with all our monogram chefs yesterday, and it was just so important for us to get together and, and share our visions and everything that we're working towards in the future and keep us excited about our passion. So again, thank you for joining me. And like Corwin said, I am here at the Monogram Design Center in downtown Chicago. It's been more than a few weeks since I've been here, but it still feels like home. I still am so happy to be here um, back with my induction cooktop. And that's where we're going to spend a lot of our time talking about today, um, induction cooking, but more or less the chefy things around it. Some of the things I'm going to apply to the uh, induction cooktop, the high heat, the low heat, some of the, the different installs. But during all of this, guys, turn on your cameras, ask questions, please, please, please. Most of my job cooking live is to be interrupted. So please interrupt me at any time. I welcome that. It adds dialogue and it adds fun to what you're about to see here today. And what we're going to do here today is actually work on our 36 inch induction cooktop. You can see it got this kind of mirrored stainless, what we like to say champagne finish on it. Totally flush, cut right into the, the, the quartz countertop here. Um, it's almost seam, seamless with just a little bit of a silicone uh, caulking line there. And we're going to spend a lot of time cooking on this. And as minimal and sleek as this looks, the functionality of induction will blow us away today. And to do that, I'm going to share with you guys my butternut squash orzo recipe. This recipe is kind of created off of a um, almost a risotto method. And whether you know it or not, risotto is not the type of rice you're eating in risotto. It's the cooking method to make it. And risotto takes 20, 25, 27 minutes of stirring time. So it's a very labor intensive method. So I'm going to cut that out. And again, you could replace the, the, the orzo pasta, which is basically rice-shaped pasta. You could replace that with rice or whatever your dietary restriction um, kind of needs and keep the rest of the recipe the same. If the seasonality, like we're right now more in asparagus season than butternut squash, you could replace the butternut squash with asparagus, ramps. Um, fiddlehead ferns, some of the most beautiful morels that are coming out of the garden right now. We can make that adjustment too. Now, I've got everything laid out here for us very easily, but before we get into that, let's just talk a little bit more about the induction top here. Now, induction cooking, one of my favorite ways to cook. Um, I've often said it's my love affair at work because I cook on all gas at home and I come to work and I cook on all induction. And the great thing about it, whether I'm on gas or induction, the end result is the same. And I'll say it again, that the cooking journey could be tailored more to you, more to your personality, cooking approach, um, induction versus gas. And that kind of tailoring or, or creature comforts to it are really, you know, the cleanability of induction. It's a flat glass top that wipes up so easily. The safety features, whether you have children in the home or you're trying to keep yourself safe. We'll talk about a lot of the safety features here. Now, the biggest thing that really speaks to me as a chef, though, um, where it almost kind of uh, goes above and beyond what gas can do is the speed of induction, five times faster than gas. That's great. We boil water, reduce liquids, all of those fun things sear five times faster than gas. Um, but what we do during that process is distribute the heat 100% differently than a gas product would. And that's because below our surface here on our induction cooktops, and remember guys, this is a 36 inch, we've got a 30 inch, we got um, five burners on this, we go down to four, we can do the installation where it's flush with the countertop, or just standing a little bit proud of the countertop. But when we do that in the monogram brand, we don't add a trim kit, it's almost like a floating piece of glass. So check that out online, I know there's a lot of beautiful installations um, with that. 
But when we apply heat to this pan here, we're gonna do it differently than we would on gas. Because below the surface here, nothing gets hot. Nothing even gets warm. So when you look below the induction top, if you could see from this angle, I've got a huge drawer installed below here because the generator here only emits a magnetic field that hovers about one inch above the cooktop surface. And that magnetic field is searching for kind of its other end, um, another iron content, ferrous metal. So this all clad pan has all clad or clad aluminum and stainless folded around the outside, but on the inside is iron content. So when I activate this burner and turn it on, and I'll go through on a close up with you guys in a, in a minute, and set this pan down on here. Immediately when I set the pan down, not before because my hand's not getting hot, there's no iron content in here, but as soon as I set the pan down, every square inch of the bottom of this pan is equally folded in with iron content. And that magnetic field that's hovering across the cooktop surface here is also equal. So when I set the pan down, immediately the whole bottom of the pan starts to heat up. And it doesn't start to heat up like it would on gas, where gas flame shoots up in a ring and only touches the outer edges of the pan. This whole pan is connecting 100% evenly with the generator below. So when I sear a steak for you later, when I throw the squash and onions in here for, in, in just a minute, you're gonna see everything start to saute evenly. There is no pan drop in temperature. It really gives me the, the benefit of, of looking good as the chef because I could overload a pan very easily at the end of the day by adding too much squash, not letting the pan get hot enough, overloading it with onions. And, and um, what else do we have here? A little bit of garlic. We could really overload this pan and at home the gas flame cannot catch up because as soon as it does, too much moistures have come out of the onions and the squash and all of those goodies. And you just leach out the moisture and you never saute. So the, act, the idea that we can come to temperature quicker is very important. Saute temperature, the, the, um, the definition of saute is high heat, little oil, not high heat, drop everything in, have the heat come down and then have it spike back up. Because induction is five times faster, even when we overload the pan, we keep a level temperature of where we want to be. So we don't jeopardize how we actually want to cook the food. I'm going to go ahead and take my computer on a little journey here over closer. Hey, John. Yeah. Um, we have a question in the chat box about are there any secret ingredients that chefs use while cooking that the home chef may not know about? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. That is a good one. You know, I think, um, how are we looking there, Corwin? Is that close enough? Yeah, we're looking good. I'm getting cool. hungry. So some of the secret ingredients that we like to use are uh, finishing oils. So this, this would be a great example as we go through this, this dish here of using a finishing oil. You know, extra virgin olive oil, first pressed olive oils, the really expensive ones are not meant to be cooked with. What you want to do is when your pasta is done, your steak is done, and it could be some of those infused oils like cracked red pepper. I actually have one right here for you guys to check out. It's been sitting here for about 60 days. It's just a nice olive oil and cracked red pepper that infused itself. So I'm gonna actually use this little trick to take our, our um, orzo up to another level today. I love that. Awesome. So now we've got the butternut squash, garlic, onions, all sauteed nicely. And you can see in the pan there that it's even. And listen, I take all the credit for that, okay? I give none of the credit to the engineers that developed this technology or any of that. I take the credit, but actually it is totally on the, the engineering team. For oh, John, you're muted. I'm sorry. I don't know how that happened. Corwin, Perfect. stop, stop muting me. It wasn't me. <laughs> okay. 
Um, no. So the idea here is that because we connect with the pan evenly, every speck of butternut squash or onion develops evenly. It gives me the opportunity to take the credit, but really it's in the engineering of the generator. The safety of this comes to, it only heats up where the pan is sitting. So again, anything outside the circumference of the pan never gets hot. Anything with nothing sitting on it, and you guys can kind of probably see better now, my little swipe control here. So on Monogram, we've got the swipe control up and down, or I can kind of jump around and pick my point or touch the plus or minus button and get exact. But as long as there's nothing metallic sitting on that, not even my watch, oh no, I'm joking, it wasn't hot. <laughs> not even my watch will connect with this. So it's perfectly safe. So now we've got a little bit of caramelization happening on here. The next thing we wanna do is kind of toast off some of our herbs. I've got a bourbon smoked paprika here. So we add just a little bit of that. I love this bourbon smoked paprika. Comes out of Louisville. Got a little extra of that smoked paprika there too. We're gonna stir that in. And now instead of using the cracked red pepper in the recipe, I'm actually gonna add that really hot, spicy cracked red pepper oil. One of the things that's great about induction cooking is you can make a mess. Cooking is a messy sport and you might spill something. It could be your red pepper oil, it could be your wine, it could be a little bit of chicken stock. It truly does not matter. The cleanability of induction allows us to cook more often with more confidence because I've never made bacon without frying grease and getting it all over the place. But I have done that on my pro range and had to spend more time than I wanted to to clean up. So the idea of having this glass cooktop that doesn't get hot unless we turn it on and set a pan there gives us the opportunity to take the cooking mess and not even consider it. Guys, we got a little fresh sage here. And just like my dried spices, I like to add that down into the oil. You see, I'm kind of crunching it all up here and releasing the oils, but I add that into the oils already in the pan because it adds those aromatics, allows everything to breathe into the environment. So you can not only see what you're cooking, but you can smell it too. Now we're gonna add a little bit of white wine in there. For the glazing process, we'll start bringing this up to a boil with a little bit of chicken stock. It's all right, make a mess, it does not matter. We've got our orzo, again, use rice, use roasted vegetables. You can replace the butternut squash with asparagus or whatever's in season, we'll put all that in there. We're gonna cream it out with just a little bit of heavy cream. And then later on, and honestly, guys, um, I, haven't, I haven't seen our showroom manager in a couple of months, so I'm just going to go ahead and make this one dairy-free, gluten-free, and everything. So that was just a little bit of rice. I've got a dairy-free cheese. That was some almond milk in there. So yeah, Corwin, we can do this. I've got you. Don't worry. We're not going to let you starve once we all get back to the showroom. I don't know if you can see my face, but I'm so excited. I can see it. I hope it's, that sounds great. Yeah, I hope everybody with uh, dietary restrictions out there realizes that every recipe can be made to our, our own liking. Um, you know, whether your dietary restriction is gluten free, dairy free, or you're like me that must eat Wagyu beef and truffles constantly. Um, so we can all tailor meals uh, to our to ourselves. So don't be afraid to play around with those recipes that we're reading online. Now, very quickly, this is coming up to a boil. We're gonna go ahead and put that cheese in there. A Little bit of salt and pepper. As that finishes up, I wanna kind of start the conversation about a few more things on the in induction cooktop. I know I mentioned to you a few of the different sizes. I can't remember if I mentioned, not only, only do we offer this in this champagne silver color, but we also do that charcoal um, kind of black color that's really attractive in a lot of kitchens. And while this finishes up, I'm gonna give you a little heads up too, to tell you 
in, I don't know how, how many minutes, maybe another 20 minutes from now, I'm going to ask you guys a question. And, you know, I haven't asked permission for this. I'm going to ask forgiveness instead. And I'll ask you all a question. And the first person to type it into the chat box, the answer, spell it correctly, all of that, we're going to send you this monogrammed spoon rest that you guys see me using. Great construction. It's got it's like a, uh, almost like a granite and wood handle. It's beautiful. Now, before we do that, I want to tell you about kind of where appliances are going and talk to you guys more conversationally and please chime in at any time about um, appliances and them kind of absorbing accessories that we would have in our kitchen, tabletop appliances, um, things that we would be normally pulling out of a, a, of a cupboard that are bulky and, and don't really um, do anything for us because they're so big. And appliances these days are getting smarter and smarter. And the most important thing that I think Monogram is doing with our new minimalist collection, with our, our statement collection, is incorporating that technology in them. So you are going to have more room in your cupboards, you're going to have um, less bulky things to pull in and out, and you're going to have more of an enjoyable cooking experience with them. The first one I'll talk to you about is sous vide. Guys, we've shared this technology with you quite often. I know you're all familiar with it. Sous vide is a French word. It means under vacuum, um, just like sous chef means under the chef. Sous vide means under vacuum. Now, and in, in a very quick conversation for this, sous vide is basically cooking proteins, vegetables, desserts, almost any recipe that you have in a food safe plastic bag underwater. The way sous vide cooking used to be done cost you about $1,500 and the vat or the, the, the plastic container you had to cook in was about the size of this cooktop and you took a ton of water and there was no resources for it. Monogram has taken that down to this little attachment at about $150 and fits in a drawer and you can cook as small or as large as you want on, on our cooktop. Now, the idea is you look up a sous vide recipe. In the monogram, monogram line, this accessory comes with its own app and it has all the recipes in there. So you could look up filet mignon, all right? So you open up your app and the app says, all right, so you wanna make a filet mignon? Perfect, how do you like it cooked? I'm about a medium rare guy. Okay, so the app says, go ahead and set your water temperature to 130 degrees, because that's medium rare. So how we do that is using this thermometer that is basically a smart temperature probe and it has Bluetooth technology built into it. So when I clip that on to any induction ready pot, a pot that has you know, ferrous metals in it, now I can hold down the center burner here and I get just a little audible alarm that lets me know now Bluetooth wise, wirelessly, this probe is talking to my cooktop. When I turn on my dial here, where my timer normally is, illuminates and says 132 degrees, not 132 seconds or hours, but 132 degrees. So my Bluetooth thermometer senses the water temperature, relays that information back to the cooktop and the cooktop says, am I plus or minus 132 degrees? If I'm lower than 132, we add micro pulses to this. If I'm higher than 132, we cut the temperature down. Eventually, you will see this start to step itself down because up to about 36 hours later, I can be hands off with sous vide cooking. The recipe will say, once your water is preheated, take your seasoned steak, heat safe plastic bag and submerge it down into the water. The recipe now says, if it's about an inch and a half thick, go ahead and leave it there for 35 to 45 minutes and it will be perfectly cooked. But because the temperature now is dialing down as we reach 132, the heat will basically shut off and suspend the cook temperature at 132 degrees. So after 45 minutes, I can take this steak out and sear it. 
or up to about three and a half, four hours later, I can still take this steak out of a 132 wa degree water bath and sear it on my induction cooktop and have perfectly mid rare results. Because it never went over 130 or 132 degrees, it can never creep closer to being more medium, to having more moisture cooked out. It can only stay exactly where I ask it to be. And because I did that, I'm able to do these calls and confidently pull this steak out and do the last step in the sous vide, the sous vide process, which is searing it. And I'm gonna get this pan up to about 500 degrees in a 45 seconds. Um, and kind of while I do that, I wanna introduce something else and see if you guys have any kind of countertop questions of you know what, what we're doing appliance wise to build some of these things in like sous vide, because the other cool one that we're doing right now is in our new statement and minimal, minimalist wall ovens, because we've added air fry technology in there. And I, and I have to bet, and I'll put all of my, I'll, I'll put all Alex's monogram dollars on it, that um, when we take our wall ovens, which are a luxury product and build in a countertop um, air frying capabilities to it, we can do it not only better, but we can do it in more capacity. So have you guys tried air frying? Have you tried sous vide cooking? What are you hoping makes it off your countertop and into the kitchen? John, I have a couple of questions. So um, we have Heather asking, what is the maximum time I can leave the meat in the pan? And I'm thinking that she means in the sous vide. Yeah, yeah. So there, there, there is kind of a maximum that you wouldn't want to go over because it wouldn't really do anything um, for your food. And I had a great conversation uh, conversation with the chefs yesterday about reverse searing. And the recipe I'm talking about really speaks to reverse searing. So I take a bone in short rib and I sous vide it at about 133 degrees for 36 hours, about like totally 36 hours. I leave my sous vide probe plugged in and just let it start to break down. After that, I cool it a little bit and I put it on as hot of a grill as I can get. And then I sear it after it's cooked. So I think you don't have to go any higher than, uh, uh, or any more than 36 hours. Awesome, thank you. And we have one more question. Um, if you would be able to explain uh, the heat zones and where they are um, for our audience, that would be great. Oh, sure. I'd love to do that. So right here, you see in the pan, I've got cast iron cooking. This is Laker, say, enamel coated. You cannot, I don't think you can get like a nicer cast iron, prettier pan than this. And I normally set that in our largest um, burner here in the center um, that ha handles extra large cookware, produces a lot of high heat. I can overload this pan and, and, and still have perfect crisp results all along. Up in the top right, or maybe it's left, or I'm not sure which way it looks on your screen, is where we designated a melt burner. And melting is that very gentle kind of babysitting temperature where I can leave a cheese sauce, a butter sauce, make hollandaise, melt chocolate over an open flame. Down here, this little kind of medium sized burner, I'm gonna get my high heats, I'm gonna get a lot of my low heats. We just wanna make sure that you don't extend outside the size of the ring, meaning your pan's not larger than the, the, the ring there. Because because of the mag, wow guys, I'm gonna try not to drip that on my computer. Um, <laughs> because if we get larger than these rings, we're still only heating the circumference. Now over here, guys, I think you can kind of see that. Let me back up, take you on a little bit of a walk there. I've got two smaller rings there. And those can be used individually or they can actually be used together because we send a griddle with your induction cooktop. 
and I can sync both of these burners. And I hope maybe you guys can kind of see that. But now I'm controlling both elements by the swipe of one finger. And those elements are bridged. So we have very little heat loss there. We have absolute perfect results, just like we're seeing on this steak. Again, guys, I'm taking all of the credit for these perfectly seared results. But again, technology gave me so one of the benefits of induction cooking is that the cooktop surface cools off so quickly it keeps me more safe than than um than gas cooking it allows me to be a little bit more absent-minded because as you see this induction griddle right now is on remove it these center dials start to blink that tells me this is on, but it can't produce heat because I removed the pan. So now take my hot pan, which is dangerous and you don't wanna be balancing and then trying to turn off controls. You take the pan away to the dishwasher, the sink, and your cooktop will time out and shut itself off. Another safety feature behind that is if I had brought this pan of water to a boil, and then went and played a round of golf. Eventually, the water boils out of my pan, dry fires where it's just a dry pan with nothing in it, and the cooktop will realize it's getting to a certain temp that it doesn't wanna be at, and it will shut off too. So there's a ton of safety features, and the biggest one being, if you really don't wanna even uh, um, get into all of that, we have lockout. So I can lock the whole cooktop and nobody can hurt themselves. So guys, back to that countertop conversation, sous vide cooking, huge, huge phenomenon. Um, everyone is, uh, anybody that's like a foodie type that doesn't know how to cook or really knows how to cook is, is trying that. Uh, they, they're having great success. It gives you just the confidence in the kitchen to produce the results you need. The other thing folks are doing in the kitchen is that air frying. Has, has anybody tried it? I'm getting ready to write, I don't know how many recipes, maybe 20 recipes at, at least to begin with. And I've just found that like I'm using like a, two tablespoons of oil for fried chicken versus like two to three cups. Um, I'm getting much lower res, uh, fat results, but I'm getting the same crispiness. One thing that I love in this world is heavy cream butter and fat. I live off of it. I thrive off of it. I'd like to eat as much of it as I can for as long as I can. So I think air frying for me is going to give me the idea in our new uh, minimalist and statement ovens where I can eat more fried food and consume more of it for longer. So that's my idea behind of it. Behind it, I'm really curious to try my chicken wings. So if anybody has a chicken wing recipe, I'd love to hear about it. So guys, now we're gonna come back over to the induction top. And I wanna show you one of the reasons I love induction cooking. Induction cooking allows my countertop or my cooktop to become part of my countertop. Um, space in the kitchen, there can never be enough. You will always run into an issue with not enough space. So now that I can slide my cutting board right on top, I don't lose any countertop space. Got my perfect steak there. Bring your plate. I've got a little bit of chili oil, a little bit of balsamic that I want to plate with today. Corwin, any other questions out there right now? I think we might have some from Alex. Cool. And so I just wanted to make sure that we had answered when, when we were asked about the three zones. So when John talked about the three zones, you can have one on high in each of those zones. So John, if you want to just show that, sorry, just really quickly, I think that'd be great visual for that, um, just to make sure we answer it. 
No, thank you so much, Alex. And, and you're totally right. I kind of skipped over the uh, part of that, that question. So the idea here at Monogram is we have three generators below the surface here. And these generators are smart. Don't think of it like gas where there's a heating element here, here, and here. And that's all they can control is the element or the, the ring above them. These generators can, can share energy like this one can push energy over here, can push energy over here. But because we have three, it gives us um, a better cooking performance because we can run three burners on high at any time. Most competitive brands have two generators, so you could run one, two pans on high, but if you added a third, that third pan would steal a little bit of energy. So at Monogram, we can do one, two, three pans on high, and if you add that fourth pan, then we're gonna steal a little energy from one of those pans on high. It does not mean that we can't put pans on all of these burners and have them at like a, a medium or a low temperature. We can definitely do that. But when it comes to the high cooking temperatures or, or the super high cooking temperatures, three pans at a time, and that's our competitive advantage of having three generators. Okay, so one zone on super high. Exactly right. Cool. Great. And I think a couple other questions came in. Yeah, one is, is there a timer on the induction cooktop or do I have to buy a separate timer? No, there, there's a beautiful built-in timer right here um, that I can add, you know, minutes, hours. And then there's also a way where I can set an individual timer for each, um, each, each burner. Okay, and then one last one. You're doing a great job, and these are really great questions, you guys. Keep them coming. Um, so how can a home chef elevate their meal presentation for family and guests? You know, I, I love that question, and I do spend a lot of time with our clients to make sure that they – they get a clear idea of the answer to that. And I think right now, as I'm getting ready to plate this dish, it's a, it's a perfect um, uh, beginning to that, um, where, you know, at Monogram, we have our mark of luxury. We have our different, you know, uh, statement pieces and minimalist pieces and everything that kind of speaks volumes. And I think that's okay to try to uh, create your own signature at home as well. And maybe that's just using an over large plate and not filling it up. Maybe at home that's, you know, I'm not a plating type, but I'm a family style um, service type and getting some really nice bowls and utensils to serve it. Even on a normal night, I found in the last, you know, couple of months that it's okay to just, you know, it's Wednesday, let's put something on a nice plate. Let's make it feel a little bit more special. And then as we do that, I think having a couple of finishing sauces that take us, uh, take us no work. Um, just like Corwin asked early, earlier about what are some of those things you have in your, your kitchen that you just kind of can't live without and having some balsamic reduction to, to kind of dress up the plate. And you'll see that perfectly here in a minute where some of that uh, finishing oil um, will definitely take it to the next, uh, the next level. So I've got that orzo here and you can see it absorbed all that liquid looking good. I want it to have just a little tighter consistency um, so it stands up on the plate because I don't want to just smear this all over the plate and I don't want to fill it up. Um, so we want that to have just a little bit of height to it. Beautiful. Then we'll grab our knife here. It's the longest I've been without my knife in my life. Take that steak. What do you guys think of that? Wow. Great. Pretty good. Again, I put I put this in about two and a half, three hours ago. Still perfect. Sous vide cook. Put that right on top of our pasta. And then plating. It's that balsamic reduction, guys. and having some squeeze bottles so you can add some design to your plate as well as a little bit of finishing oil around there. And I think you'll see oh, yeah. that those drops, I'm trying to get it in there, those drops on the plate 
definitely elevate the dish. You don't need this big, heavy, heavy sauce. There's sauce in the or orzo. You need a little acidity, a little extra heat from those um, accent sauces. And that is it. Maybe some extra vegetables if that's your thing. I've had plenty of salads lately, so I'm going protein and carbs. We have a question in the chat of who gets to eat this beautiful meal. That's a good one. Um, I'm pretty sure this will be my lunch. I'm going to do a little cooking here and uh, shoot some more videos. So I think this one might be mine. We need to invent like the, you know, smell vision taste, you know, we need to be able to pass that food right through the screen because it's teasing all of us right now. <laughs> I get that. I'm just the same. Now, guys, I promised you a little treat. I cannot feed you at home, but I'm told, or actually, no, I'm not told. I'm hoping I'm going to be told I can send you all this little gift after we're done. And I have a quick question. And the first person that can type it into the, the chat box, spell it correctly, space it correctly, um, is going to win. And it's not my last name, and it's not my first name, which are both always spelled wrong. It is the correct spelling of sous vide. Go, go. Ah! We got a winner. Is that Jeannie? I think it's Jeannie. I can barely see it on my screen. Jean, Jean, Jean is our winner. I love it. Congratulations, Jean. You're going to love this, oh, this little I, spoon. No, no, no. I, I went too fast. It's Pat Pearson. Oh, no. Oh, Jean. Well, Jean and Pat will both get one. I went too fast. They, they started moving so quickly. <laughs> it's Pat you know, Pearson. Since, since I haven't asked permission for this, why don't we just give them both one anyways? Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. We'll definitely send one to both of you. Sorry, it moved so fast. <laughs> John, so, so we got another question for you. What is your favorite thing to sous vide? Oh, wow. Um, I think chicken. I think we all, yeah, I think we all can kind of um, screw up chicken. It's one of those things where if you're not using a temperature probe, if it's not a recipe you do all the time or you have a watchful eye on, as soon as you go over 163 degrees, you start losing moisture. Um, so the idea that I can sous vide chicken, I usually do mine at about 158 degrees for two and a half hours. It locks in the moisture. And then when I pull it out, I put it in the hottest pan, the hottest grill, caramelize it, and the moisture content and the flavor is just so rich. Hello? All right. If there's, um, Alex, let me know if there's any other questions. Yeah. Um, there's just another little uh, uh, little thing I want to talk about on cleanability on the induction. And I know I've probably got it kind of blocked right now. Try not to make my computer fall off the table. And, you know, it's, it's how you clean it. And honestly, cleaning your griddle or your, uh, your induction cooktop is really simple. You just need to have a glass cooktop scrubby. I call it a non-abrasive scrubby pad, but it says glass cooktop scrubby on the packaging. And then there's a few different brands. This is Wyman's. I like the Ceramabrite brand the best. But the benefit of this glass cooktop is not only is it beautiful, but it cleans up in a matter of seconds. So all you have to do is apply a little bit of that polishing cream and whether you've destroyed this top or you've just made one egg over easy perfectly and there's just a little bit of oil on it, you can polish this back to brand new, perfectly cleaned and sanitized without any question or really any fuss. So the cleaning process never gets in the way of your cooking process. Awesome, John. Now we have two remaining questions. Cool. Um, the first one is like continuing off of the uh, sous vide conversation. Um, somebody wants to know, did you say you can sous vide a dessert? And if so, what's an example? Yeah, um, there's a few different desserts you can do. So, you know, you might not finish them all sous vide style, but if you think of like poached pears, yeah, you can you can perfectly poach a pear, just like you can per perfectly poach fish or um, beets. 
as well to lock in all of that flavor. Um, so you can poach pears and you've all, many of you have had my roasted pears or peaches dessert that I do in our hearth oven and then put a little vanilla custard inside. So the same thing that can be done there. You wanna talk about a dessert, how about a cocktail? You can infuse your own vodkas without losing any alcohol content. So instead of getting it so hot that the alcohol burns off, you, you, you mask it at a perfect level where the vanilla bean, the citrus peel, whatever we have left over, you can take a $10 bottle of vodka and turn it into $30 easily. Um, the other thing is um, custards, ice cream. Um, you can make ice cream sous vide, frozen vanilla custard because the egg will cook at a certain degree level. So I can set my water temperature to like 138 degrees where I don't come out with scrambled eggs. And then after it cools down, my custard goes into the ice cream maker and it looks perfect. Oh, creme brulee. <laughs> uh, creme brulee is another perfect custard that's done in there and you can do it and look at, oh man there's so many beautiful pictures online of creme uh, sous vide creme brulee done in the canning jars i love that one. Oh well i'll have to google that later so the uh, um i don't know if you have any other questions but i wanted to say i get the question all the time you know, because you guys have seen me cooking on my pro range in, in Michigan, but anytime you're here in, in the showroom, you know, I speak about my love of, of, of induction. And I've often said whether you choose induction or pro range or gas cooktop, um, that you're not going to make a bad choice. Make the best choice for yourself. I believe the end results are going to be the same. Like I said, the cooking journey, you saw how easily, easily I, I cleaned this up. You saw what technology with connectivity, um, with our apps and everything can do for this, which you can't get as much of that out of pro range or gas cooktops. Um, but I think they both have a place in, in my heart. I, I, I love cooking on, on, on them both. I don't think there's a better option. I think there's the best option for, for each one of our owners. And, and I always will tell them when they come in here to talk to me, I'm not here to talk you into an induction cooktop or a pro range. Just want you to make sure that there is one that may benefit you more than, than the other and features that may speak to your customer more than the other, whether they're design, performance, materials, um, of course, they all come with the same ownership experience. So it makes our job very easy to have such competitive pro, uh, products and appliances within our own brand. Just makes our customer's job a little bit harder. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for that, because I know a lot of people are definitely curious. Um, but I feel like, too, we need to talk about pots a little bit because we do get that question a lot as well. Yeah, I was hoping that one would, would come up. And, um, you know, the, the, the couple of misconceptions, and I'm going to move my computer screen back just a little bit more. Uh, a couple of misconceptions about induction cooking are that the top never gets hot, right? Well, I told you the pan gets hot. The top can get hot because the pan is hot sitting on top of it and it reflects heat back down to the glass cooktop surface. But even though the hot indicator light here says it's still hot, it's only warm to the touch. So it's still not you know, burning my hand off. Because the induction cooktop works off of magnetism, any pot or pan that you have has to have iron content built into it. So if you hold a magnet to the side of your pan and it sticks, it will work on induction. But there's different levels of, uh, of magnetism and, 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 and draw for the energy from the, um, the generator. So if you have a heavier pan, like that cast iron, it's gonna have more iron content than even this all clad. So it's gonna actually draw the energy out even more evenly and even more quickly. Now, what will not work on induction cooking is pure copper. Pure copper is some of the best pans in the world. Um, many of us do not have pure copper at home. They're not fun to clean. They're not fun to, to um, have around. They're very, very pretty, but there's no iron content, so they won't work. This all clad pan, they actually make a copper clad just like this all clad. So this is clad and stainless and has aluminum in it but it has enough iron content that it will connect with the generator. So all clad copper will work on here. Any aluminum pans will not work on here. 
There's a lot of pans that won't, and most of them, besides the copper products, are a cheaper product that, you know, more than likely is okay to be replaced anyways. Most of our great pans, um, they the companies changed nothing about the recipe. Um, they were just great pans full of iron content anyways. Heavier, the better. Really quickly, I just wanted to answer. There's a question about the the amps for the 30 and the 36 inch. So our 30 inch is a 40 amp, and our 36 inch is a 50 amp. Yeah, thanks for that, Alex. Thanks for helping me answer that. I knew I knew half of that question, so I appreciate your support. <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions for Chef John? Well, great guys. I really appreciate you being here with us um, today and this week. Um, as always, you know, you can reach out to us um, and, and get recipes or anything you need. I know I, I posted the, um, the butternut squash orzo recipe. The, the steak was an addition. So use whatever protein you want with that. I hope you enjoy everything. I hope you use me if you need any, any help with your customers about induction or anything monogram wise. You always know that I'm part of, of your business and the ownership experience for you and your clients. So um, please, we're here for you. Uh, let us know what we can do. Yeah, thank you. And the only thing I'll add to is we'll send a follow up email that will have a link to everything. So we'll link to our website, to our YouTube channel where this will be recorded. And so, yeah, definitely tune in and we look forward to seeing you again, hopefully.